Hello everyone, myself Ashish Desai, Assistant Professor, Mechanical Department. Today we are going to discuss here Unit First Basics. So in last lectures we have discussed the properties of fluid and their numericals. Now we will discuss here the fluid pressure. So first of all we look at the learning objective. So first learning objective is to know related terms of fluid pressure. Second learning objective is to know hydrostatic law and Pascal law. So after this session, some learning outcome is there. So first learning outcome is the student will able to know about fluid pressure. Second learning outcome is the student will able to explain about hydrostatic law and Pascal's law. So first of all, we look at here the pressure. So pressure is defined as a normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area. So here the pressure is nothing but force per unit area so that's why the SI unit is for force is Newton and for area is meter square so that is why the unit of pressure is Newton per meter square and also it is called as Pascal so we can write as a PA so 1 PA is equal to 1 Newton per meter square so this term is very small so as compared to other so that's why we can use a multiples so like kilopascal so that is 10 to 3 pa so 1 kp is equal to 10 to 3 pa and mega pascal that is 1 mpa is equal to 10 to 6 pascal so these terms we can use here so this is regarding the pressure so pressure is always remember that we can relate with gases or liquid so the counter of counterpart of pressure in solids so it is related with stress okay so now we discuss here the pressure so here pressure is defined as normal force exerted by fluid per unit area so de definition is there so for clear cut and uh, understanding purpose we can take these two that containers so the force is exerted exerted by fluid per unit area so that is the perpendicular force is applying on a container that is surface area so that is called as pressure so here clearly mentioned that unit is 1 mp 1 pa is equal to 1 newton per meter square and 1 bar is equal to 10 to 5 newton per meter square now next point is importance of pressure measurement so while maintaining the uh, that boiler conditions uh, it is required to measure the pressure at every instant because if it is maximize the pressure so blasting will be takes place so that precautions we have to take it for pressure measuring uh, the, that steam and next term is for pressure measuring is done for continuous processing industries uh, like uh, manufacturing and chemical industries also we can use for uh, that pressure measure helps in determine the liquid levels also you can use it for uh, determine the leakage of between two points then next we can use uh, for pressure is used for Measuring the rate of flow for using venturi orifice water and flow nozzles. The next term for measuring the pressure change can becomes integration of temperature. So that, that time also we can measure the pressure and it can helps to in a thermometer fluid uh, that expansion type. The next uh, day to day life is you have to measure the pressure in tubes of vehicle tires. So that's why we can measure the pressure. So now we discuss regarding the pressure terms. So first of all, look at the P atmospheric, that is P A T M. P A T M is nothing but atmospheric pressure. So the pre the air is exerted a pressure on our surface that is called as P atmospheric. Again, I repeat, the air exerts a pressure on a our surface that is called as P atmospheric. Also, it is called as barometric pressure because it is the atmospheric pressure is measured uh, with the help of barometric instrument that is called as that's why it is called as barometric pressure now the next term that is absolute pressure so absolute pressure is uh, related with uh, starts from zero pressure to maximum is okay and here the gauge pressure so gauge pressure is always remember that it can be above of the atmospheric b gauge is nothing but p gauge is nothing but the above of the atmospheric so that's why 
we can write p absolute is equal to p atmospheric plus p gauge again i repeat for p absolute is equal to p atmospheric plus p gauge and now next term that is for p vacuum so p vacuum is measured below the atmospheric so below the atmospheric so for that purpose p absolute vacuum or you can say absolute vacuum is equal to p atmospheric minus p vacuum so this is regarding the terms now we can take the uh, the formula the p gauge so p gauge is equal to p absolute minus p atmospheric and for p vacuum so p vacuum is nothing but p atmospheric minus p absolute so this is regarding the p, p gauge or and p vacuum so p vacuum is nothing but always remember that it measured below the atmospheric and for p gauge it is above atmospheric now we move for next term that is pressure variation at depth of fluid so while increasing the depth increasing the depth of this sporting can so here consider a sporting can and if you are considering the depth so while increasing the depth what will happen the pressure will be increases so that's why you have to measure the pressure at a bottom of side always remember that because we have to take example so this is sporting can and we have to make a three holes so from that we can create a jet so here wickage jet is there here middle of that as compared to both and here the strongest jet is there so that's why we can say that pressure is at bottom is maximum so that's why you can measure the pressure at bottom of the site now we move for the next term that is pressure variation at rest or you can say hydrostatic law so when increasing the pressure at a vertically downward direction which is equal to weight density of fluid so the rate of pressure increase of pressure vertically downward direction is equal to weight density weight density means specific weight that is about rho into g so again we can write a relation for that so dou p by dou z so dou p means increase in the pressure with respect to downward direction so with respect to direction dou z is equal to weight density so weight density is about rho into g okay so this is regarding the pressure variation so for hydrostatic law we uh, Remembering this relation, dou p by dou z is equal to rho into g. Dou p by dou z. So dou p means increase in the pressure, rate of increase of pressure to the vertical direction is equal to weight density. So this is the formula. So here we can prove the hydrostatic law. We can say that dou p by dou z is equal to rho g. Okay, dou p by dou z is equal to rho g. You can here we can derive here. So first we consider the small cylindrical element so the small cylindrical element that is a b c d that element contains that some area that is cylindrical element so that delta a is the cross sectional area delta a is cross sectional area delta z is a of fluid element so delta is the area and delta z is the smallest that height of the fluid element then pressure p is the pressure on face a b then z z is equal to distance of a fluid from the free surface free surface means it is from air so when that distance is z okay now we are considering the forces on that surface so first of all we consider the force is on ab that is pressure force on ab so actually pressure is nothing but what is that pressure pressure is equal to force upon area so that force is equal to what pressure into area so that's a pressure into area so pressure into area area is the delta a because this is smallest element so that is why i can take delta a for on a side ab so here we can take p delta a for on the base of ab now we discuss here for for uh, phase cd so phase cd is for p plus dou p by dou z into delta z into delta a so this is equal and opposite opposite force so according to newton's law it's satisfied right so p delta p delta z delta z delta a so if you consider here the value of delta z this delta is z is zero 
so that time delta z zero means what what will happen that is p delta i right directly you can take p delta i in instead of delta z you can take zero suppose zero you can take what will happen p delta i so this is equal and opposite forces will be there only we have to assume that this element is delta z and while increasing the depth what will happen the change in a pressure so that's why so that's why you can take dou p by delta z into delta z so this smallest element you can cancel out directly also so that is why the pressure force on cd will be p plus dou p by dou z delta z into delta i correct and next that is element is weight of the fluid so weight of the fluid is nothing but now you know that weight is nothing but mass into gravity right so mass is nothing but rho that is rho into volume so here we can take g as it is instead of mass rho into volume because we know that density is equal to mass upon volume so mass is nothing but rho into volume so i can write here rho into volume that is density into volume so rho into g into volume so volume is volume is for this delta a is area and delta z is the length so that's why the volume is delta into delta z this is regarding the three forces again i repeat for this process so pressure force is on a sorry pressure force we are considering first the smallest element so phase a b c d for phase a b we can take a pressure force so pressure force is nothing but we can take first pressure pressure is equal to pressure force upon area so pressure force is nothing but pressure into area so pressure into area the smallest element area is there that's why we can take delta a and opposite of that so this is for phase ab and opposite of that phase cd we can take as p plus dou p by dou z into delta z into delta i so here we can place delta z zero what will happen delta z zero means this depth will be zero so directly relation between p delta i so p delta i is there but for hydrostatic law for proving purpose when you increase in depth the pressure will be increased so smallest depth is there so that's why we can take delta p into delta z into delta z so that is why that equation becomes like this so this is for phase ab for phase cd and for third force is here that is weight of the fluid so weight of the fluid is nothing but mass weight means mass into gravity so mass is nothing but actually density is nothing but mass upon volume so that's why mass is nothing but rho into volume that is density into volume so here we can write as density is rho g into volume so volume is nothing but delta a is area and delta z is length that's why delta z into delta a like this so this is regarding the three forces now next we move for uh, again i write here three forces for derivation purpose now we take this bc and ed equal and opposite so we can equate these three forces so p delta a is we can take positive and opposite of that this force we can take negative okay and weight of the fluid element is always remember that it is in vertical manner vertically downward right so first of all we will take the p delta a minus that phase cd right plus rho into g into delta a delta z so solving purpose we multiply this delta a to both sides delta a that is p delta a dou p by dou z delta z delta a rho g delta a delta z then cancels out the p delta a so equation becomes dou p by dou z that is minus sign delta z delta a plus rho g delta a delta z so we can transfer this this same so it get cancelled out delta a delta z so remain only dou p by dou z is equal to rho into g so this is regarding the hydrostatic law so it state that rate of increase of pressure in a vertically direction is equal to weight of the density of fluid so here it is said that like this and this is known as a hydrostatic law now we move for next term that is uh, for 
finding out the this is regarding the smallest element finding out the overall element that's why i can take integration on both sides so that equation becomes so dot dz on that side so p for integration of dou p so here integration that symbol is there integration so after integrating dou p is p then rho into g is constant because the density is constant for fluid g is not important we can take outside of that and integration of dou z that is become z so that is why p is equal to rho g z or you can say z is equal to p by rho g z means height of this fluid element okay so this is called as z is called as pressure head so sometimes z or you can say h okay so this is regarding the hydrostatic law now we move for the pascal law so pascal law is state that the fluid pressure and density at a point in a static mass which is equal in all directions so that means px py pz is equal right or we can say that actually pascal is a uh, that establish a french mathematician which can stress that said that a uh, pressure exerted anywhere in a confined incompressible fluid incompressible fluid means liquid compressible fluid if it is gases okay so incompressible fluid means that is liquid so it is transmitted equally in all directions so while applying the pressure at confinement zone so we can take example so this is a pressure we apply with the hand so when applying the pressure the pressure will be changed at a time over all these regions so that means the pressure will be distributed in a equal in all directions correct so here the when your hand pressure is applied on this bubble what will happen the pressure will be changed and it should be same so that means the pressure is transmitted equally in all direction now we take another example so we take a ball and when you apply the pressure so that can transmit equal in all directions so when only you have to press the finger so this pressure will be exerted with on a all the all the surface so this is nothing but a pascal's law so again i repeat the pressure is at a point in a static mass is equal to is equal in all directions so this pressure is equal in all direction that is px equal to py equal to pz now we derive the relation for px py pz so this is proof so that is why we can take a wedge shaped element which is deep in a water so this is face ab and face ac and face bc so on face ab so for on face ab the force is perpendicular that is called as this force is perpendicular on this area that's why ab right so this area so that is why it is called as pressure okay so here pressure that we can find out pressure so pressure is nothing but pressure force upon area so here we require pressure force so pressure force is equal to pressure into area so this is pressure into area okay so here we know that the pressure is so here the pressure force is equal to pressure into area so pressure is along x direction so here we can take x direction so that's px into area so here on ab face on ab face that distance is dy so that's why dy into 1 1 why take is 1 because we have to take the paper of unity that is dz equal to 1 so again i repeat this is wedge shape element which is deep into the water and this is a triangle that is or can say wedge shape that is a b c for z direction that we can take a 1 that is unity so this pressure force is equal to pressure into area right so pressure means p so this is along x direction and for area purpose so area is for this area find out a b is that is dy into z so z direction we can take one that's what dy 
into 1. Okay. Similarly, we can take a phase AC. So, what will happen uh, for that? So, that pressure force is along Y direction, right? So, that's why we can take PY. And that distance AC is DX, is DX. So, that's why area will be DX into 1 because 1 is nothing but it is for Z, that is the uh, unity. So, we can take PY into delta X into 1. Similarly, for phase BC. But here, the pressure force is perpendicular to this BC. But it is here, the, we can calculate for PZ. What will happen? It should be inclined with uh, this angle. So, this angle is theta. Okay. Now, we discuss here the forces acting on the elements. So, in that fluid element, the pressure forces uh, acting on a surfaces that is in the x direction, y direction and z direction as well as here we act the weight of the fluid element. Now we move for the terms. So here the first term for phase AB Px into dy into 1. Px into dy into 1 that is Px dy into 1. 1 but is dz. For Phase BC, for phase BC, what will happen? PZ. So PZ into DS into DZ because DS, this distance is called as DS into DZ for DZ for uh, that unity. So that's why I can take in our Z direction unity. The next pressure force on AC. So this pressure force is parallel to Y. That's why I can take PY and this distance, this is called as delta X into 1 that is for unity so here we can resolve the forces in x directions so therefore only x direction we are considering here so this is x direction resolution is there so px dy into 1 so we can take positive and this was p dy into dx into 1 it is not considered because only allows a x direction forces so this is x direction but here this pz ds into 1 is is inclined manner so that's why we can take the two components one is cos and one is sine so for horizontal basis we can take so this is vertical and horizontal so here we can take the relation for that so here theta is the angle so here also it becomes theta so only changes this diagram now we take the forces. So for force AB, so on a base AB, Px dy into 1. Or you can say Px dy into dz. dz is unity. So that's why you can take dz instead of dz, you can take 1. Next, Pz into ds into dz. So Pz, because of this Pz ds1, Pz ds1, or you can say Pz ds dz. Instead of 1, we can take dz because paper unit is 1. So that's why you can take 1. So this is against sine 90 minus theta because this PZ is try to uh, that resolve in a perpendicular manner. So that's why this angle is theta. So that's why it becomes sine 90 minus theta. So sine 90 minus theta equal to zero. So now we equation becomes so actually we know that sine 90 minus theta is cos theta. So that's why we can write as a cos theta over here and instead of dz we can write one because paper unit is 1 okay so that's why you can take 1 now what is my cos theta so cos theta is nothing but opposite side so opposite side is dx sorry that opposite side for cos theta is there so cos theta is nothing but adjacent side to the hypotenuse so adjacent side for is ab that is why you can write as dy and the hypotenuse is having length ds. So for D, ds is equal to so hot. So ds into 1 is there, right? So now instead of we can read ds cos theta. So here we can move this term ds cos theta equal to dy. So we can take ds into 1 cos theta is equal to we can take dy directly. Now we can move the next term. So instead of ds into 1 into cos theta. We can rate a dy and then you can transfer on 
right hand side so that's why equation becomes the divided by into cancel out and that relation becomes so it cancelled out and then relation becomes px equal to pz that is equation number one now this equation one similarly we can prove for the for x and y direction so first equation is related with x and z now next we can prove directly x and y and similarly we can say that equation one and equation two gives the px py pz these are all directions so it is equal in all directions when you apply the pressure at a rest condition so that's why that time this pressure will be applied for all these fluid so that is nothing but that pascal's law okay so here we clearly mentioned that the pressure intensity of pressure at any point in a static fluid is equal in all directions now we move for next point that is application of pascal's law so first application in automobiles so hydraulic brake system is there so when you pressing the this pedal uh, that pedal what will happen the immediately the car will stops so that time the hydraulic pressure is exerted and then the, the vehicle will stop the next for hydraulic jack so when you're lifting uh, that that you can say punctured vehicle or can say that vehicle wheel can use hydraulic jacks then hydraulic press so hydraulic press machine is there so for servicing purpose we can use a smaller force on that elemental area so this pressure and this pressure will be same so here we can take more effort for developing such maximum force and then this vehicle will lift it so this is regarding the hydraulic press the next hydraulic machines uh, also we can use there the next the clearly mentioned that the pascal's law over here so here we can apply the force applied force which is at a lower or can say low low side of pressure uh, that piston so here piston size is small and here piston size is bigger that means container is also different right so when you apply the smallest pressure so it is on this fluid element smallest fluid element so that should be equal in all, all directions so when you applying it so this pressure will be acted on whole that vehicles that space okay so that fluid vehicle the fluids so that's why vehicle will be lifted so smallest force we have to convert into larger force so that's why so pressure p1 and p2 will be same but area will be different pressure p1 and p2 will be same and a1 a2 will be different so i can write as a p1 a1 is equal to p2 a2 and therefore p1 is equal to p2 so that's why equation becomes like this and this here a1 a2 sorry a1 a2 or can say a2 upon a1 is nothing but a hydraulic or can say mechanical advantage from the hydraulic lift so this is regarding the pascal law when you are applying the smallest element pressure so this pressure is equal on that side also so this maximum effort will convert the vehicle lifting so this is regarding the pascal law now we move for the measurement of pressure so as you know that the pressure measuring devices are divided in two parts that is one is a manometer second is a mechanical gauges so manometer is used for to measuring the pressure that is lower pressure and for mechanical gauges is used for the measuring the high pressure sites so there are different uh, that come that devices or can say gauges is there diaphragm type burden tube type dead weight type bellow type so these are the uh, types for mechanical gauges and for manometer purpose there are categorized into two parts that is simple manometer and differential manometer so in simple manometer the glass tube is there that one end is attached to the pressure side and another is to open to the atmosphere this is for simple manometer so in that type is u-tube manometer and single column manometer so a single column and u-tube so this is glass tube this is u-tube glass tube and while you have to measure the pressure at a points so that time piezometer is here used 
the next is a differential manometer differential means it is tells about difference between two points difference between two points means suppose two pipes is there two pipe is there and if you require the pressure difference between these two points so that is we can that is called as differential manometer so in it is used in a uh, venturi meter orifice meter pitot tube also now we can uh, take the uh, that two, two types that is u-tube differential and inverted u-tube uh, differential so these are the uh, criteria for manometers usually manometers is used for measuring the small and medium pressures but in case of mechanical gauges the higher pressure side and as well as low pressure side we can measure easily so this is regarding the mechanical gauges thank you in the next lecture we will discuss regarding the detailing of pressure measurement devices thank you